The Mohammedan Muslim media and individuals, as well as so-called Arabists, incessantly speak in invariably glowing terms of the contribution of the Mohammedan Muslims to human civilization. What is the reality? Before I address this question, there is an extremely important word that has to be defined first, which is at the root of this discussion. This word is civilization. According to the English language, it comprises a society which is in an advanced state of social development with complex legal, political and religious organizations. That is, in an advanced state of intellectual, cultural and material development in human society marked by progress in the arts and sciences, the extensive use of record keeping, including writing, and the appearance of complex political and social institutions. Like everything else about Mohammedan Islam, facts and reality are contrary to all their exaggerated and invariably false and wishful thinking declarations. Let us examine the historical facts as recorded by the Mohammedan Muslims themselves and their contemporaries. In the Arabian Peninsula where Muhammad was born, the Arabs were among the most illiterate, superstitious and unlearned nomadic and semi-nomadic people in what we call the Middle East today. Although surrounded by other truly advanced civilizations and cultures, they had not even the semblance of a civilization to speak of. They had no central authority such as a king or a priest king, no government, no army, no civil service, no arts, no sciences and no record keeping. The Arabs, under the banner of so-called Islam, conquered several civilizations on three continents, such as the Zoroastrian Sassanid Persian Empire, the Byzantine Christian Empire, the Coptic Christian Egyptians, the Hindu Indians, the Buddhist Chinese, etc. These were truly advanced civilizations. It is therefore inconceivable to suggest that the Arabs could have imparted anything of value to the subjugated peoples of these conquered civilizations. In Arabic, the subject people who converted to Muhammadan Islam are ca called Mawali, meaning clients, followers, or supporters. This is an extremely relevant and important word because it is from among the conquered peoples of these civilizations that the Arab imperialists were able to build their mosques, their palaces, run their trade and economies, collect taxes, and take census. It was from among the Mawali and the Jews and Christians of the conquered territories that Greek, Roman, and Hebrew literature, philosophies, and sciences were translated to Arabic. From 701 to 1424, a period about 700 years, a maximum of 80 scientists and scholars under the sword of Muhammadan Islam, mostly from among the Mawali, contributed a wealth of advancement in many branches of knowledge. It is vitally important for the listeners to realize that these scholars based their knowledge on foundations first set by others centuries before them. Egyptian, Hebrew, Persian, Greek, Roman, Byzantine, Indian, etc., whose knowledge and writings were translated into Arabic by men from the conquered peoples by converts to Muhammadan Islam, Mawali, as well as by Jews, Christians, and others. The so-called Islamic science and or Islamic civilization had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with Muhammadan Islam. Almost the entirety of these scholars and scientists excelled not because of Muhammadan Islam, but in spite of Muhammadan Islam, since they were invariably secular thinkers. No knowledge whatsoever in the sciences, arts, engineering, architecture, philosophy, etc., etc., can possibly sprout under fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam, because the only knowledge that fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam can recognize as valid and worthy is knowledge of the Qur'an, which they call ilm. Out of the 80 or so scientists and scholars mentioned above, only a handful were pure Arabs. The remainder were Persian, Turkic, Jews, Christians, Kurds, Sabians, Spaniards, North Africans, etc. In reality, this science and this civilization should be and must be called Mawali science and or Mawali civilization because Muhammadan Islam contributed absolutely nothing to its evolution, 
propagation and or establishment. Nothing of value in human intellectual endeavors can possibly be created or grow under fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam. Muhammadan Muslims listening to this chapter of our series will be outraged at such statements. Well, let them think about the following facts and find out the common denominator that underlines them. 1. Can any follower of Muhammad name 10 Muhammadan Muslims who had contributed anything whatsoever to human intellectual, artistic and philosophical advancement from among the tens of millions in the Arabian Peninsula in the last 1,372 years between 635 to 2007. 2. Can any follower of Muhammad name 10 Muhammadan Muslims who have contributed anything whatsoever to the advancement of human knowledge in the sciences, arts, philosophy, theological discourses, etc., from among the hundreds of millions of Muhammadan Muslims in the world during the 500 years from 1450 to 1950 AD? The only reason that they cannot find these scientists or scholars is because fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam cannot survive under the bright light of knowledge, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of religious belief, and or freedom of intellectual dialogue and debate, because the best and most perfect system of fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam is that of the Taliban in Afghanistan, a state of mind-boggling ignorance, religious intolerance, hate, terror, and utter stupidity. Fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam can only survive in darkness, and as we know, very little, if anything, can bloom and prosper in the dark without sunshine. That is why very little knowledge, if any, emanates from over 50 Muhammadan Muslim states in the world today. The above statements and facts are available for all to read, and no amount of Muhammadan Muslim anger, diatribes, hate-mongering threats and terror can change an iota of them. Muhammadan Muslims thrive in the twilight zone of denial and of blaming all others, the denial of facts, the denial of reality, the blame others syndrome. For as long as they are not willing or able to face facts, Muhammadan Islam and Muhammadan Muslims will continue to remain forever fixed in the time warp of the 7th century, the time of Muhammad and his Quran.